self-care is something like the definition of self-care for me is constantly changing and I think there isn't really like a blanket definition for it I don't think I think self-care is whatever it needs to be at that moment in time for you um so sometimes self-care for me is saying no other times self-care is just like taking a minute to relax or to just like kind of focus on restoring myself sometimes self-care is like organization like organize your time so that you don't have to burn out and so that you can actually see what you can realistically do in a day um yeah I think there's so many ways that you can look at self-care sometimes it's like affirmations um it just depends on what you need as a person what what sort of healing you need in that moment in time and I think burnout is definitely something that I struggled with a lot especially during uni um and yeah like there are so many ways to avoid it but then it's tricky as well because circumstances can make it very difficult to act on self-care because if you've got bills to pay if you've got a degree to get if you've got rent to pay if you're trying to keep up with things if you've got to work in order to survive it's hard to then say like take a break like take care of yourself like just stop or don't do the things that like make you feel burnt out sometimes you have to do them so it can be a bit of a catch-22 so yeah I think I don't really have like a one definition for what self-care is I think it is whatever it needs to be and it changes and it shifts all of the time um, and I think that's why it's important to keep checking in on yourself and your health and your body and where you're at so that you can always know like what it, what is it that I need that I can give to myself right now I think it definitely does differ. Um, I guess with Shades of Noir, the focus was always arts education, which is what, again, why the creative healing and sort of came into it. And what Shades of Noir is predominantly sort of like focusing on is the fact that there are disparities with these issues and people from minority groups do have layers of oppression that perhaps other people don't have. Um, and so, yeah, there definitely is, for example, studying in university or and a lot of my interests for example that I wanted to focus on were coming from my experience as a black African woman and if you're in an institution where you aren't the majority and you're the minority you're not always you almost have to fight to be heard and to be understood sometimes and that's a layer that adds to like everything that you're already trying to deal with and it's like you want to, all you want to do is kind of get your degree but there's all these layers that kind of obstacles that you have to fight and overcome and those aren't evenly distributed unfortunately so I think um, there definitely are conversations that need to be had specifically for African women for Caribbean women because we all come from backgrounds that come with different issues um, that other people might not necessarily face so yeah Yeah, um, because part of what I was looking at in my dissertation um, in terms of how issues of women's sexual health are talked about and reported, it's like a lot of the actual scientific terms we don't use and there are a lot of euphemisms that I use, a lot of sort of slang because it kind of, I guess to mask the shame around the subject, it's easier to approach the conversation if you say like, I'm trying to think of a euphemism right now it's not coming to me but it's easier to talk about certain conversations when you don't like speak about them frankly um which i don't really it kind of yeah it, it insinuates that there's a shame around certain things and you shouldn't really be having certain conversations and it also means that the education about what that actual issue is is affected so yeah for example with clue who were predominantly in like a part of my research a very they did like a whole campaign on the period like periods and all the different words like that we use for when we're on our period like that time of the month or it's like code red and there's all these other things and it's like even period itself isn't really like the word but that's more common but that's like why are we so ashamed to say that like we're bleeding that like, there's something that everybody goes through and it's all not everybody but like it's a normal thing um but where's the yeah there's all this shame around it so i think it's important to normalize things and to encourage certain conversations um 
just demystifies a lot of things for young women growing up because then what happens is you end up going online to like find information about certain things and the online information isn't always reliable which is also what I was exploring in my dissertation because of the fact that a lot of things um, even in femtech there are a few sort of um, apps and um, developments that are run by women and have been headed by women but a lot of them are headed by men and a man has never been in a woman's body in a, to be able to understand the layers of what it is that we experience so that language is going to be different um, so I think it's very important for a woman to take ownership of the language around our bodies and to be confident and to be shameless in the way that we approach these conversations um, yeah I feel like I just waffled there but Well, we all learn about, well, in school, we have sex education. I think um, sex education in this country, that's the only sex education I know, is, is not great. I think there's a better job that needs to be done in that area in the sense that um, we don't talk about the fact that there are different ways, that there are different types of sex, whether it's like your sexuality, what kind of partner you have, or how you choose to have sex, how you feel about sex. Um, and it's also, it's just very basic. It, there's no nuance in it. There's no diversity in the way that sex is spoken about. The layers of like this, what you experience when you start having sex are not talked about. And so a lot of people fumble through these things and kind of learn on the go, make mistakes learn from their friends who are also at the same age as them making mistakes and then go on the internet to find information that sometimes isn't the best. So I think sex education, the first point like that we have needs to do a lot better. And then obviously at home, that's another way that people learn about sex, but not everybody can speak to their parents or their guardians about those sorts of things. So sometimes you grow up having never ever had a conversation about that with anyone other than your friends and the internet. Um, so that's why I reinforce how important it is for anybody that is writing about sexual health to make sure that like the information is factually sound and to make sure that it's well researched and that it's nuanced and then it understands that there are different experiences because it really does have a huge impact on women's lives if that is one of the main sources of information that they're getting. Um, so yeah, I think that's why also technology is such a great thing because it does give us the agency and the access to this information um, that maybe we wouldn't have otherwise. I know like part of the Shade of Moisine, my mom wrote an article in it, um, which is like a letter to her daughter, to me. And she was talking about how when she was growing up at the time when there wasn't the internet and at home, like it, she grew up in Zimbabwe, so it wasn't the cultural norm to talk about sex or anything to do with like the intimate parts of your body so she was like I had no idea like well into my late 20s I was still learning and still figuring things out and still fumbling and like you kind of realize well if someone had just told me if there was a place I could have just gone to get this information my experience would have been so much easier and so much clearer and there would have been less mistakes less mishaps less confusion um so yeah I think we're really it's great that we're in a position where we have the internet and we have this access to information and we can even go to the like GP and get given a pamphlet with all this information as well. So accessibility is definitely a lot better now. <laughs>